So in the last lecture, we learned how to handle exception inside a catch block. If I go to VS Code, in the last lecture, we handled the database connection exception. So whenever our Nest.js application is not able to connect to the database, it is going to throw an exception inside the catch block. We are handling that exception. And how we are handling that exception? By throwing this request timeout exception. So in that exception, we are specifying this error message. An error has occurred. Please try again later. And for the error description, we are saying that the application is not able to connect to the database. Okay, now let me go ahead and let me also wrap this code, which we are writing for creating a new user in a try catch block. So I'll cut it from here. And here, let me write a try block. And let me also write a catch block. This catch block is going to receive the error, the exception error, which has occurred in the try block. Let me paste the code, which we copied. And in the catch block, again, I'm going to throw the same exception. Assuming that inside this catch block, we will reach this catch block only when there is some problem connecting to the database. Let's format the document. Now let me save the changes. And let's go to Postman. And here I'm going to open this create user endpoint, this create user request, which we have saved. And here I'll try to create a new user, but with a duplicate email. Here, let me change the username to maybe Vivek Gupta one. But here I'm going to keep an email with which we already have a user in the database. And if I send this request in the response, you're seeing that we are receiving this 201 created. But if I go to the terminal here, you will see that an error has been logged. And this error says an error has occurred. Please try again later. And the error description says, could not connect to the database. So this is the same error which we are throwing from this catch block. But our Nest.js application is connected to the database. And you see this service, this PostgreSQL service that is also running. Then why we have got this error that it could not connect to the database? That's because when we tried to insert a record with the duplicate email, in the user table, we already have a user with that email. So at that time, the database thrown an exception. It thrown an error because it cannot insert a record with a duplicate email because email is unique field in user table. So at that time, it thrown an exception. And the same exception was received by Nest.js application. And when it received that exception, in order to handle that exception, it went to this catch block. And in this catch block, since for all exceptions, we are throwing the same request timeout exception with this message and with this error description. That's why for the duplicate email exception also, we are seeing the same error message. So here, what we need to do is before throwing this exception, we need to check if this exception has occurred because of the database connection or not. So what I'm going to do here is in this get all users method, I'm going to comment this exception for now. And from here, let me go ahead and let me simply return the error object, the exception error object. Let's save the changes. And now let's go to the postman and let's go to this get all users request. And here, let's also stop the service so that we will not be able to connect to the database. And remember that I'm stopping this PostgreSQL service, which is running in the background. Okay, now let's go to the postman. Let's make a request. And this time an exception will occur because the application will not be able to connect to the database. And when the exception will occur, we are returning that exception error in the response. So we have received that error object in the response. And here you will see that for that error, when we are not able to connect to the database, the error code is this e connection refused. So what we can do is we can make use of this code. So let me go back to VS code and let's remove this return statement now and let's uncomment this. And before this, what I'll do is I'll check if 
error code so on this error object we will have a code property if it is equal to this e connection refused then only we want to throw this exception so i'll cut this exception from here and i'll put it inside this if block okay otherwise let's say i simply want to log the error so for that i'll say console.log error and let me do the same thing for this create user also so inside this catch block first i will check if the error code is equal to e connection refused then only i want to throw this request timeout exception otherwise i want to log the error message let me save the changes and before that let me restart the service otherwise the application will not be able to connect to the database so now our application is connected to the database our application is running as expected let's go to the postman and now let's try to create a new user with a duplicate email if i send the request in the response we are seeing this 201 created but we know that on the database level this record will not be created because of the duplicate email and if i go to the terminal since an exception has occurred while creating the user it will go to the catch block there it will check if the error code is this in this case the error code will not be equal to this so it is simply going to log the error object in the terminal so if i go to the terminal you will see that an error object has been logged and there you will see that the error message is duplicate key value violates unique key constraint okay and if i scroll down you will see that here also we have an error code which is equal to 23505 and the error detail says that the key email with this value vivek at gmail.com already exists so now what we can do is we can use this code and let's go to vs code and there i'm also going to write another if statement and here also i will check if error dot code if it is equal to this value so this is a string value the error code is always going to be a string value even though inside that we have an integer number but it is going to be a string value so if the error code is equal to this in that case we want to throw another type of exception so for that i'll say throw new and the exception which we want to throw in this case is bad request exception so basically this exception why in this case the request will be bad request because here with the request body we are sending a bad data we are sending data with a duplicate email and here since we have a duplicate email the request is a bad request because with the request we are receiving a bad data so here i am going to throw bad request exception and here for the error message let's say let's simply provide a generic message saying that there is some duplicate value for the user in database okay now why i'm giving this generic message is because when we are going to create a user both email should be unique and username should be unique so this message will be shown if any one of those fields are duplicate okay so if username is duplicate at that time also the same error will occur with this error code so at that time also we want to return bad request exception and if the email is duplicate at that time also we want to return this bad request exception with this let's save the changes let's go to postman and now if i send this request let's see what we get here we are still getting this 201 created for some reason but if i go to the terminal there you will see that in the response we have this bad request exception where the message is there is some duplicate value for the user in the database and the error description is bad request and the status code is 400 okay so in this way now we are conditionally handling the exception based on the error code now here when we are throwing this bad request exception we can see it in the terminal but we are not seeing it in the postman right here we are still seeing 
the status as 201 created and in the response we are not seeing any error message so in the next lecture what we are going to do is we are going to handle exceptions on the model constraints so for example for each user email is a unique field so in the model in the entity on this email we have this unique constraint in the same way on this username also we have this unique constraint so we will see how we can handle the model constraint exceptions in our next lecture this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day